Oh, well, well, seems like the police are in trouble for those ramming off the road tactics that they were employing straight from Carmageddon after banning clips from Carmageddon. But the thing is, it's the way that they were broadcasting it online on Twitter and everyone was basically going along for the joyride. Surely that is the unethical part. It's not the fact they're doing it and stopping the crime, it's the fact that they're advertising it and encouraging copycats. That was always the problem with clips from Death Race 2000 and Carmageddon and, you know, old video games and old violent movies, etc., with cars ramming into people. It was always that people would copy them. But the police seem to want to advertise that. They seem to want that to happen. Now they're being castigated for it. For the first time ever, I might add. Because when the IPCC investigates itself, it often comes up, oh, nothing wrong. Right-wingers tend to think the police are their friends because they automatically side with authoritarians. They side with authority. That's why... That's why they can never, ever get anything done. That's why we cannot get anything done, because we automatically, inevitably side with the authorities. We're trying to stop a corrupt government, so we side with the authorities. We're trying to stop rapist police, so we say more police. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? The hypocrisy of the right, the morons, the monarchists, is just unbelievable. And on Twitter, I seem to have surrounded myself in an echo chamber of these people that I absolutely hate and have nothing in common with. I am socially liberal. I'm gay. So, you know, my politics is about trying to walk a fine line between being socially liberal, having all these values, etc., uh, tolerance, and also not selling out my country completely. That's my politics, and there's no party for moderates like myself. There's no centrist party. Actually, the only centrist party I would call is one that the media would call far right, because the, main, the media is actually far right and extremist, etc., and they're the, ones, they're the ones everyone thinks are centrist and moderate, because they're mainstream media. But in actual fact... You know, and uh, UKIP could be a moderate party. UKIP's a very moderate party, in fact. But the media, the far-right media, comes out and says that it's far-right. Or the far-left media, whatever it is. It gets confusing. But it's extremist, because far-left and far-right are the same thing. They meet, you know, socialism, communism, Nazism, fascism. They all meet, because they're all authoritarian. But now we have a criminal state. We've got a criminal treasonous government. And because we've got a criminal state, we've got criminal police, because the police are the agents of the criminal state. And that means... They're against the people because the people are nationalists against globalism and the police are basically enforcing the globalist agenda, etc. So the police are the enemy of the people. And it shouldn't be too difficult for right-wingers to work that out, especially the hatred they have for them in Telford and Rotherham and Rochdale and Oxford, etc., Huddersfield, with the endless grooming gang cases being covered up and protected by police and councillors, with the endless knife attacks just allowed, etc., with the Sharia compliance of the law and the judiciary and the police etc and the way that it's administered you know it's just it's a joke so you get arrested if you leave some bacon somewhere but you won't get arrested if you shout Allahu Akbar and stab everyone with a zombie knife because that is allowed it's only allowed because it's nothing to do with Islam obviously anything with Allah in it is nothing to do with Islam and if you say it is you're racist or Islamophobic well yeah I'm Islamophobic but I'm not racist who wouldn't be Islamophobic? It's a horrible religion. Look at Saudi Arabia. Look at the human rights record. Look at Sharia law. Say no more. But I wonder, when we sign the migrant pact on the 11th of December and sell away our country, give away our country completely to unlimited illegal migration as a human right, when we, se when we sign that and we will sign it, we will be finished. It doesn't matter about Brexit. It doesn't matter about Brexit bickering. It doesn't matter about the vote. It doesn't matter about what the par parliament does or the politics or whatever or whether there's contempt of parliament in this latest buzzword that they're using all the time. No. What matters is the migrant pact and how we just sell out our country in one fell swoop. In fact, with the migrant pact and the Brexit deal, we kill two birds with one stone. Oh, we're not allowed to say that word anymore, are we? We have to say, oh, kill two bagels or eat two bagels with one whatever. Touch two birds with one whatever it is. I don't know. There's political correct terms you can't say kill two birds with one stone. Just like you can't say bringing home the bacon. Ooh, I wonder if that's anything to do with Islam. What a coincidence they both don't like pork. I wonder if the actor Kevin Bacon is going to have to change his name. And Marvin Gaye already had to change his name to Marvin Homosexual. Because it offends gays, don't you know? And gays are snowflakes, and protecting snowflakes is the modus operandi of the government, apparently. <clears throat> protecting and appealing to and appeasing the, um, s the snowflakes, basically. But the <laughs> people that are associated with being on the right, people that are associated with being populists, they can't even stick their finger up at a car without it being a hate crime. They can't even swear at a taxi or anything. But, you know, the immigrants can stab taxi drivers with machetes. Gangs, people with machetes, and they can get away with it because it can be ruled completely legal, completely allowed. And so when lawlessness becomes law, which is what the police are pushing now because they've been changed through common purpose, that's why we shouldn't be their allies. No matter how much we agree with these tactics of, you know, running mopeds off the road or whatever, police are enemies of the people because they are agents of the criminal state. And that means that the people are the enemies of the criminal police. Get it!
They're not going to suddenly be your friend. And just because people protest doesn't make them leftists. You know, the police have now become corporate enforcers and enforcers of the enemy state, which is basically, you know, working for the EU. Uh, we know the Migrant Pact was written by Merkel, had a massive involvement with Germany, etc. We know that Canada's going to sign it. Lots of countries haven't signed it, but we know the Cooks are going to sign it. And we know the UK is probably going to sign it because we don't have anyone talking about it in the media. There's complete blackout on this subject. Completely. It's not been mentioned once, and it's more important than Brexit. Just like the Islamization of our country is more important than Brexit. In fact, there's a lot of things that are more important than Brexit. That's why I side with UKIP, and they're siding with Tommy Robinson. And he's pointing out all these problems rather than just Brexit, which is what Nigel Farage would have wanted. And even then, he doesn't want real Brexit. Nigel Farage didn't mention about the EU military unification going on in the background. He didn't mention it because he doesn't want Brexit. He's a liar. He's a fraud. He's establishment. And I'm never listening to him again. So, Nigel Farage, you were on Alex Jones' show once. And guess who else was on Alex Jones' show and who he supported? Tommy Robinson. And you don't support Tommy, do you? So what were you doing on Alex Jones' show? I think we should demonise Nigel Farage and say, why were you on that show if you don't support Tommy? Hmm, interesting point. Will you ever go on it again, Nigel, now that you're establishment? I don't think so.